Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. And today we'll find out how mempools work. Now we've already touched on mempools a little bit before when we were talking about how miners pick their transactions. Well, today we'll see how mempools function in this distributed peer-to-peer -peer system. All right, so let's get started. Here we've got a network of uh, participants of the network, uh, so-called nodes. Their computers would be called nodes because they're not actually miners. They're just people who want to transact on the network, send each other uh, bitcoins or uh, any other cryptocurrency that this network is based around. And what we're going to now do is we're going to replace a couple of um, miners just to add some variety to our network to see that this actually works regardless of the configuration of our network. And as we've seen before, there is a mempool attached to each one of these participants. And the crucial thing here is that the mempool, there is a mempool for each participant, whether it's a node or a miner. And that means that there isn't just like one mempool shared between everybody because as we recall this is a peer to distributed peer-to-peer -peer network that's the whole concept of blockchain so there is nothing central about it including the mempool the mempool has to be in individual to every single participant and the other thing here is that the mempool as we recall is not the blockchain itself it's a staging area for transactions so blocks for instance on the bitcoin blockchain blocks are added at a certain regularity in the Bitcoin blockchain, they're added once every 10 minutes. And yet we can transact with each other more frequently. We don't have to wait and only transact once every 10 minutes. We Like I could send money to uh, somebody today and they could send money to me um, like a few seconds later and so on at any point in time. So the mempool is like a staging area where these transactions go before they're added to a block. So now let's have an example. Let's look at an example. Let's say Susan over here wants to send some money to somebody. It doesn't matter whom. Uh, we're going to talk about more about um, transactions and wallets and so on later on. But for now, let's just say she wants to do a transaction. And what happens then? Well, she conducts a transaction and that transaction gets added to her, main, uh, to her mempool. Then that gets broadcasted or relayed across the network. And that means it gets relayed to the closest nodes, including miners. We're just going to use the word nodes uh, for, for here, from here. And so then that transaction gets added to their mempools. And again, there's lots and lots of checks that are conducted by every single node uh, to make sure that it's a valid transaction, that everything adds up. It's not, it's not just something fake, that the signatures are valid and so on. And we'll talk more about that further down the course. And then they relay it further down the network and that transaction gets added to every single mempool in the network. Then what happens? Well, then let's say uh, Mary over here also wants to do a transaction and Mary does her transaction. That transaction gets relayed through the network as well uh, to every single node like that. Okay, and then let's say one of the miners wants to do a transaction. Usually they just mine, uh, but they can also do transactions. Why not? So the miner does a transaction and then again gets relayed, gets relayed, gets relayed through the network and so on. And in that similar fashion, the mempool gets more and more and more transactions added to it. We only have six here, but typically a mempool can fill up you know, like throughout the day to 8,000, more, more than 9,000, 10,000 transactions can be sitting there at any given point in time. And then when a block comes along, as we discussed before, uh, a block can contain about 2,000 transactions, uh, more or less. A block is limited by one, one megabyte, but a block can contain 2,000 transactions approximately, depending on the size of the transactions, of course. Well, and now let's have a look at how that works. What happens when a block comes along? How does a block occur? Well, we know that the miners are not just sitting there idly. Uh, the miners are actually mining these blocks. So there's a blockchain right now as of up until that point in time, and the miners are churning away, they're mining their blocks, and then uh, all of a sudden one of them finds the next block. Well, they solve the cryptographic, cryptographic hash puzzle, and the next block, they're allowed to add the next block. So how is this, uh, how does this work? Well, from the tutorial about how miners select transactions, we know that while they were mining the block in the process, they had already selected the transactions that are in that block. So they have a block configuration that they're mining. And so even before they have successfully mined the block, they know what transactions are gonna be in that block based on their selection criteria. And so now, uh, since that block has indeed been mined, it's time to take these transactions out of the mempool. So these transactions get removed from the mempool and they are because they're already in the block. And then that block gets relayed across the network, gets added to these guys. And then those same transactions get removed from their mempools. Um, as long as the block pass passes the checks, 
then that's the way it happens. So then it gets added over here, transactions get removed, and it gets added to all the networks, and these transactions get removed from uh, their mempools for every single node. And yep, so there we go. And then that block uh, you know, is now part of the network, and then the network just continues on from there. And they, you know, same thing, same process happens again and again and again. So there we go. That's how the mempools work. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, show you some additional reading and then we'll jump to look at some stats on blockchain.info. All right. So the additional reading for today is an interesting article. I, I liked it. It's an in-depth guide into how the mempools work. Um, it's on Medium. As usual, the link will be in the notes for the course. And um, this guide is how mempools work from the perspective of not a miner but of a node of a normal just a normal participant who's not a miner and that's why I, I like this approach because what we've been seeing so far is mostly like from perspective of miners and not much you see from perspective of nodes whereas here they explain it from a perspective of just a normal participant and how the mempool can fill up what the size limits are with what there there are certain um fee thresholds that kick in after a certain point in time and so on so quite an interesting read and now let's have a look at some stats all right so here we've got blockchain.info um by the way this is the this is the additional reading here it's not that long it's just a short article um yeah so stats right what did i want to show you today mm -hmm -hmm. okay here we go uh, if you need uh, to get these just go to blockchain.info and then go to the charts this one and what I wanted to have a look at is, we'll look at mempool size, transaction count, uh, and growth. Um, yeah, we'll look at those three. All right, so mempool size, uh, there you go. This is in, what is this, in bytes. And you can see how the size varies. And this is, so this is throughout the day. So there's one day, 23, 24, 25, 26. I guess it depends on the day and so on. Like it, it goes down, like once the transactions are out of there, then uh, starts building up as more transactions go on, go in there. Um, I guess like because blocks are mined every 10 minutes, so it's not a question of supply of blocks. It's a question of demand of transactions. It depends on, uh, my thinking is like when people wake up, you can see kind of like it's period, periodic. When people wake up, probably in the US and when they're transacting and when more transactions appear and they're available to be distributed into blocks and they start piling up. Uh, let's have a look at so that was from bytes to uh, number of bytes. This is from number of transactions similar pattern uh, kind of you can see again See a bit of um, up and down. We can we can do a higher, you know, that's it's a couple of days Let's do like 30 days now you can see more Global or like long-term trends. So this is going to be a year now we're loading Interesting things you remember that when the price for Bitcoin was very high there were lots of transactions people were like running around buying bitcoins very very fast um, there's a lot of demand so that's why it was not hitting down to zero that's a transaction count and this is mempool size, gro size growth so this is the speed at which it's growing uh not not very not very varied this chart let's have a look here yeah it's kind of like more or less consistent um another interesting one which i really like what, which I wanted to show you if you, is if you go to data and you go to stats instead of charts and then you go to unconfirmed transactions. So those are the transactions that are in the mempool that they're called unconfirmed transactions. And this is just amazing. I love watching this. Um, you can see how they're being added. Like these are people transacting with each other. And as soon as this, they transact, these get added. So here you can see the total number of unconfirmed transactions. It's also illustrated over there for, for us. And not sure, really sure about the map. It's not very dynamic. But nevertheless, they got some information here, transactions per second. And yeah, so that's how they're being. So there's 8,000. As soon as a block is mined, this will go down to like get reduced significantly by about 2,000 transactions or so uh, because those transactions will go into a block. And so you know how they say there's only, uh, usually they say like there's three things you can watch forever, fire, water, and then they add something. Well. I'm going to add the, the growth of unconfirmed transactions or the growth of the mempool for a Bitcoin. It's very mesmerizing. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out. So if you go here, just watch it. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, us for today. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And now 
uh, we have a bit of a clearer picture on how mempools work and how that gets relayed throughout the network. And I look forward to seeing you back here next time. Until then, enjoy blockchains. Mm -hmm.